God, you have claimed us in baptism through the waters of creation. We join the Atlantic and the Pacific, the Great Lakes and the Caribbean, in giving you thanks and praise. O oh God, you have called us to live in unity and love with our neighbors. We join in worship with all creatures that walk, crawl, slither, fly, or swim. O oh God, you nourish the earth with water and snow, and till the soil with frost and thaw. We come before you to be cultivated by your word. O oh God, the planets and solar systems and galaxies belong to you. We come before you with great humility, amazed that you are even mindful of us. Welcome to our Creation Focus Worship Service in celebration of Earth Day. My name is Phoebe Morad, and I'm Executive Director of Lutherans Restoring Creation. As a grassroots movement, we cultivate hope and healing for all by reflecting the inspiration offered by a variety of communities within the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We invite you to join as we listen intently to one another and other creatures, to the land and the earth keepers who have cared for these places for countless generations. We acknowledge that as we are called to restore creation, we are also called to restore right relationship with one another. As part of this ministry, we honor all our indigenous siblings who have cared for these places and beings since time immemorial. We invite non-Indigenous communities and individuals to learn about the original and continuous stewards of the land upon which you exist. As we join in this holy vocation of loving our neighbor through the sacred act of listening. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forms the earth, redeems all creation and sustains life. Amen. Amen. God of tempest, God of whirlwind. In the beginning, when the earth was formless, your spirit swept over the waters. You spoke, and the wind of your word fashioned order. Darkness and light, sea and sky and soil, sun and moon, birds and fish, creatures, plants, and people. And with a word, you took delight. You looked upon your creation and called it good. After you poured out the floods of judgment, you set your bow in the clouds, a promise to every living creature that water is life. You spoke and the sky sang with all the colors of your covenant. For cardinals and foxes, bumblebees and tortoises, Noah and his family, and all descendants of your first act of redemption. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We marvel at your creation, for it is good. At Jacob's well, the woman from Samaria witnessed the water of eternal life from your beloved son. In baptism, your spirit brings water to life. You speak and your children are born from the womb of your mercy. You wrap us in the grace of your never-ending love and raise us to share that love with all that you have made. You look upon your creation and call us good. Forgiven in the waters of baptism, we, we praise you, you, creator of all things. We, we worship you, redeemer of all that lives. We serve you, sustainer of your people in every land. Amen. Squati ni se si hoa, ela diga yisa yi. Chiwa na gali uaya, chala nigiti ni hi. Ni go hila, ni go hila, skisa li se si yoga. Oh, go. Gala, see now you are flyer. Shall 
Let us pray. Source of all, throughout your good creation, we hear resurrection. Percussive spring rains, the hymnody of birds, silent explosions of bursting buds. Yet we also see your wounded hands in the clotting sea, the bleeding sky and the lacerated earth. Open our ears with renewed awe for the splendor that unfolds around us, and with renewed compassion for your cries for help. Then calm our fears and fill us with your peace, that we too might become your risen body, overflowing with grace to transform and renew, until together with all that you have borne, we join in one great anthem of new life. In the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen. Psalm 8 God, brilliant Lord, Yours is a household name. Nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk. And silence atheist babble. I look up at your macro skies, dark and enormous your handmade sky jewelry. Moon and stars mounted in their settings. Then I look at my micro self and wonder, why do you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? Yet, we've so narrowly missed being gods. Bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world. Repeated to us your Genesis charge. made us stewards of sheep and cattle. Even animals out in the wild. Birds flying. Fish swimming. Whales singing in the ocean deeps. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world.
Jesus Christ is the young God. Be yet the legal day. They thought last the key be near yet. Did the key begin begin the house so a call they thought last the key ba the house in the key be shipping in beneath our inna be or not on this. Grace and peace be unto you, from God, our Mother and Father, and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I greet you from Alexandria, Virginia, the ancestral lands of the Doeg and Pistaway peoples. My name is Carmelo Santos, and I serve in the ELCA as Director for Theological Diversity and Ecumenical and Interreligious Engagement. I was invited by the leadership of Lutherans Restoring Creation 
to share the good news of the gospel with you today on the occasion of International Earth Day. I must confess that although I was glad to accept the invitation, I also felt overwhelmed by the task. How can I speak of good news during a time when we are immersed in so much bad news, especially regarding the state of our planet and of our fellow creatures? How can we speak of good news when we witness with a maddening sense of impotence how so many innocent lives are being destroyed and displaced by wars, by political and economic violence, and by droughts and famine? How can we speak of good news when we witness the destruction of entire species and ecosystems sacrificed on the altar of the gods of profit and progress? How can we speak of good news when we witness storms increasing in power and frequency, devastating communities, and sea levels rising at an alarming rate, already forcing people to leave their ancestral homelands to seek refuge in strange lands? How can we speak of good news when we witness with anguish the plight of people from all over the world, most often brown, black, indigenous, and poor, risking it all in perilous journeys by land or sea to seek refuge in neighboring countries, only to often find themselves rejected, arrested, criminalized, and victimized? The reason we can speak of good news in the midst of so much bad news is because the good news that we speak of, the gospel, was born in the crux of pain, suffering, and hopelessness. The gospel was born at the foot of the cross, where all hope seemed to have died, where even God felt abandoned by God. The good news was born in an empty tomb and in a locked room where Jesus' followers felt perhaps a bit like many feel today, fearful, confused, demoralized, not knowing what to do next. The reason we can speak of good news today, even today, is because thanks to the cross, we have learned to recognize by faith the mysterious presence of the living God hidden in the midst of death, pain, and suffering, making a way out of no way, wrenching life out of death, and transmuting the fear and hopelessness of our heart into courage, peace, and hope against all hope. God speaks that good news to the world and to us through the living word that comes to us in the scriptures. From today's scripture text, we can discern at least three ways in which God speaks good news regarding the challenges we're facing in the struggle for climate justice, for creation care, and for bringing healing to our communities and to the nations. Those three ways are, first, the gift of community. Second, the gift of the testimonies of those who have been wounded like Christ. And third, the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the forgiveness of sins, but also the retention of sins. Let us begin with the first gift, the gift of community. Several years ago, theologian Victor Vestale, who is no longer with us, preached a powerful sermon on this gospel text. In his sermon, he pointed out that even though Thomas didn't believe in the witness of the resurrection, he nonetheless didn't abandon the community, nor did the community abandon him. He was accepted by the community of faith, even in his disbelief. In the Gospel of John, Thomas functions as our twin. We are the doubting ones, but we are also the ones who are nonetheless accepted and sustained by the community, even when we are having a hard time believing. In the community of faith, we take turns believing and doubting, fearing and hoping, hiding and witnessing. We don't have to be strong all the time. We don't have to be courageous all the time. Sometimes our faith and courage lifts others up, and at other times, we are the ones who need to be lifted up. That is why God gives us the gift of community. In fact, 
There is an ancient tradition that says that faith does not belong to the individual alone, but to the church as a whole. We are sustained in our weakness by the strength of the church as a whole. In our weakness, we are prayed for, loved by, and sustained and challenged by the church. We need this community in order to do the work that is ahead of us. The Latin American song, Momento Nuevo, puts it well. Solo y aislado no hay nadie capaz. That is, alone and isolated, no one is capable. The song further says that it is no longer possible to believe that things will be easy. There are many forces that produce death, that inflict pain, sadness, and desolation. So it is necessary to strengthen our unity. Thank God for the gift of church and for the gift of communities like Lutherans restoring creation. The second gift that God offers us in today's text is the gift of learning to listen to the testimony of those who have been wounded like Christ. It is interesting that when Jesus appears to Thomas, he chooses to reveal himself by showing him his wounds. His wounds reveal something important to the disciples. The wounds reveal that he is Jesus, but also that he is Jesus in the body, that the risen Lord is also the crucified Messiah. But there is even more. The wounds of his crucifixion also reveal that the official powers of his day were illegitimate because they were not instruments for God, for the well-being of the people, but rather instruments of domination and exploitation that were in direct contradiction of God's will. That is symbolized powerfully by Luke in the words of the centurion right after Jesus died. He said, certainly this man was innocent. The wounds of the victims reveal something important about societies and systems of power. The lies of political and economic ideologies cannot resist the truth revealed by the wounds of their victims. Isn't that what has happened with the war in Ukraine? The images of the victims have destroyed the ideological lies used to justify the aggression. Nature also has wounds that reveal the lies about the ideologies of profit and perpetual growth that are at the basis of our economy and of the structure of our society. The testimony of these wounds is so powerful that they must be kept out of sight, like in the children's story in Dr. Seuss's book and movie called The Lorax. The wounded forest had to be kept out of sight, outside the city borders, hidden by walls meant to conceal and deceive. But the wounded ones are not just victims. They are also survivors, purveyors of important wisdom. From the same communities that have suffered greatly because of climate change, because of pollution and economic injustice, great leaders have emerged in the struggle for climate justice and planetary healing. This is true especially among the youth around the world and particularly youth from indigenous communities and from minoritized groups. We must listen to them because they have a perspective and a wisdom that is unique and important for addressing the current crisis. More than help them, those of us in positions of privilege or power should learn to listen to them and perhaps even follow their lead. Could it be that through them, the risen one is speaking to the world? Finally, the third gift that God offers us today in today's Gospel reading is the power that Jesus and the Spirit give to the Church to forgive sins and to retain sins. Lutherans know a lot about the first part of that gift, that is, about forgiveness of sins. But we are very shy about the second part, the retaining of sins part. And yet, both are essential to the work of healing and redemption that the Spirit of God is doing in the world. What does it mean to forgive or retain sins? 
It means to proclaim what has already taken place on the cross and resurrection of Christ. To forgive sins is to make available that free gift of God's grace by means of proclamation. As the Apostle Paul said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, but not all have obeyed the good news. Romans 10, chapters 13 through 16, and RSV. We could also add to the quote from the Apostle Paul, the question, and how are they to accept Christ's forgiveness if they don't even know that they need it? If they are not even aware of their sin or of, their suffer or of the suffering that they are inflicting on others and on the planet. That is why Luther spoke of the word of God as having two functions, the law function and the gospel function. The law function retains sins in the sense that it moves people to recognize the ways in which they have fallen away from God's ways, and as a result are causing pain, suffering, and death to themselves and to others in the world, including the planet. When people are moved to contrition and repentance by this proclamation of the law function of the word, then their hearts become fertile soil for the seed of forgiveness that the Holy Spirit uses to bring liberation and transformation. What that means in the context of the work of creation care and climate justice is that the church must be courageous and dare to speak truth to governments and corporations, that is, to show them the wounds of their victims and have them face the truth that they try to keep out of sight, sometimes even out of their own sights and consciousness. The church must do this in private and in public. The church must not neglect its mission to proclaim the word in its entirety, that is, as law and gospel, and not as lukewarm and deluded version of the gospel only. The church commits theological malpractice when it does not carry out its full mission to forgive and retain sins in the name of Christ through the proclamation of the living word. But law is not the last word. The last word is a word of forgiveness and promise. The promise that a different world is possible and that we can be collaborators with God in the awesome work of bringing about that new creation. Only God can bring it about, of course, but we have been given tasks and gifts that in God's hands will make all the difference. Even if we cannot imagine how things can get better. We must remember that the limits of our imagination are not the limits of God's power. We must do the part that has been entrusted to us. Then be ready to be surprised by the power of the resurrection as the first disciples were. I conclude with the words of the revelation that was given to John. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Revelation 21, 5. And the church says, Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Dios hoy nos llama a un momento nuevo A caminar junto con su pueblo Es hora de transformar lo que no da más Y solo ya es al lado no hay nadie capaz Por eso ven Entra la novedad con todos también Tú eres muy importante Por eso ven Entra en la rueda con todos también. 
tu eres muy importante Ven Ya no es posible creer que todo es fácil Hay muchas jueces que producen muerte No están dolor, tristeza y deslación Es necesario afianzar nuestra unión Por eso ven Entra en la rueda con todos También Tú eres muy importante Ven Entra en la rueda con todos también. Tú eres muy importante. Ven. La fuerza que hace hoy brota la vida. Obra a nosotros dándonos un gracia. Es Dios que nos convida a trabajar su amor, compartir y las fuerzas juntas por eso ven. Entra en la rueda con todos también. Tú eres muy importante. Por eso ven. Entra en la rueda con todos también. Tú eres muy importante Ven Sovereign of the Universe You set the parameters of the sea and renew the earth with light from the ages and rain from the heavens. Receive the gifts we bring as we care for oceans, lakes, and all habitats. To the glory of God, in the name of Christ, our peace. Amen. At this time, we invite you to go to lutheransrestoringcreation.org. And there you can find more information about what we do and how to support us, including our donate button. Here you are able to click a donation amount and select the donation frequency. And you can end at a certain date if you'd like. And select what kind of gift it is and make a note for the donor scroll as well. All of this is done through a secure portal and you are able to make an account where you are able to edit your donation at any time. Set free from captivity to sin and death. And pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church and witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and to nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct those who are given human authority to live with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. 
God in mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you. Whenever people overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your peace and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God. Respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The God of all creation, of oceans and lakes, of prairie dogs and moose, of spring rains and winter squalls, of Pluto and Mars, bless, keep, and strengthen you and all creation, today, tomorrow, and always, in the name of the triune God. Amen. In all we do, make us your flesh and bone, so we may live and work in you, that through us you are known. Let us be peace for everyone, and hope amid despair. Let us be joy for those with none, and love beyond compare. Come, living church, be born again as body, word, and sign. Bring healing to a world of pain, restoring God's design. Reflect what earth is meant to be, creation reconciled. And live your new identity as God's beloved child. On behalf of Lutheran's Restore and Creation, thank you for joining us. Go in peace, care for creation. Thanks be to God.